I had to get towed this weekend, and it's a relevant story, especially relevant to what's happening in the news right now with Clay, etc., because I rode in the cab, and I had to ride for a long way. It was a long tow, and he had 95.7 The Game on. This is the Bay Area, California. And I said, uh, what were they talking about? And he said, Clay. And I said, did we get rid of him finally? And he said, well, he may be leaving. He unfollowed the Warriors on Twitter. I was like, oh, brother. Oh, brother. And he, like I said, he's a Bay Area-based person. But the next thing he said was, I hope the Warriors get LeBron. And I was like, oh, I, I was going to have to jump out. I was going to have to just cancel the tow and jump out of the cab in case he was one of those weird and rare Bay Area people that actually think LeBron James would be good for the Warriors. It turns out he lives in the Bay Area, but he's a diehard Laker fan or an old school Laker fan. All he wanted was for the Lakers to get rid of LeBron. So he's one of you guys, as many of you on this channel, who are diehard Laker fans that uh, are suffering. And he went on to complain about how rough it's been since LeBron came to L.A. Okay, so anyway, Clay unfollows the Warriors. And I'm thinking, how douchey and petty is that? And then by today, I'm out jogging this morning and I'm hearing everything coming through on YouTube. And Draymond Green, basically, he sounded like he was mocking his own teammate. Not that I ever expect anything classy to come out of Draymond. Uh, I just pray that Clay and Draymond would get out of this organization. And then, what's the show with Malika and Stephen A? You know, one of those garbage ESPN shows. And they were talking about it. And somebody said, actually said, that was a little bit petty. And then Greeny and the others were like, yeah, but we love petty. You know, it is petty and it's gross and it's not to be commended or congratulated. You're not supposed to be on TV telling the youth that are watching that that's a good thing. Clay, please take your passive aggressive ass and go join Mr. Passive Aggressive himself in LA. Maybe you guys will be a great fit because you, you were shit guarding LeBron. You know, I was looking back at the 2016 finals again, and it's, it's true now too. LeBron loves that matchup. It's one of the few matchups he actually uh, likes because Clay's soft. And, you know, it's a combination of you're not really allowed to guard LeBron in the first place. Combined with LeBron will just bully right past him. He doesn't even have to run over him. He just goes past him and gets his layups. So Clay, Clay's a liability when it comes to LeBron. He's a liability across the board. They mentioned that he still averages 18 points a game that's hard for me to believe and i thought about it more i'm like oh it's because he has those random weird 40 plus point nights and then the rest of <laughs> the rest of the time he's having 10 point nights he's shit he doesn't pass the eye test get out of here but here's what i really wanted to talk about because there's so much talk about players deserving to get paid players deserving their contracts, deserving to get taken care of, or deserving a long-term security deal. Uh, again, how did we reach this point where everyone just accepts that at face value? That doesn't make any sense. You're a professional athlete and you make an absurd amount of money. That's supposed to happen in a short period of time. That much money in a short period of time because you are are engaged in a wear and tear lifestyle. Why on earth 
do we think these guys are supposed to all have long careers and get paid crazy amounts of money the entire career? Number one contrast person I've been thinking about Larry Bird. I did a video about this a long time ago when Larry Bird was about to get um, another nice contract and get paid and he comes into the office and retires like the day before it would have become effective. He said, I, I'm not going to be able to earn that. I'm not going to be able to deliver what you guys are paying me. Man, that's integrity. Man, that's character. What Clay and most of the players today are doing now is the exact opposite of that. Everybody's thinking about, oh, the loyalty that needs to be shown to Clay and you need to take care of Clay. Where is the sense of obligation from the player to the franchise? Where is the sense of thankfulness? Where is the realization that you have had a great life and been paid an absurd amount of money to be lucky enough to be part of a system that made you seem like a better player than you are? And even if Clay was everything that Clay seems to think that he is, at some point... Just be thankful. Just be like, you know what? You're right. I have not been delivering for you guys for the last five years that you were still nice enough to continue to pay me handsomely and put my sorry ass out on the court and cost you games. Thank you for doing that for me for five years instead of tossing my ass the way that you should have and, and wasting your salary cap space on me hey clay could you possibly think about it the other direction say thank you none of these guys are taught to be thankful say thank you you don't deserve what you've been getting so maybe you should say thank you and have the decency to say you know what warriors i actually care about you guys you gave me a lot and now i want to help the franchise out by taking way less money and a smaller role I'd love to stay here in the Bay Area, but you know what? You guys don't owe me anything. You've already paid me, and you've paid me handsomely to underperform. You paid me well back when I was performing well, so that part is taken care of. It's not like you weren't getting paid, Clay. It's not like you weren't getting paid during the good years. So don't act like you're owed more. You're not owed more. You were paid. If anything, now Clay owes the Warrior Organization. But if the Warrior Organization isn't willing to get rid of scum like Draymond Green, then really Clay is a secondary topic. Anyway, I primarily wanted to bring up that contrast between Larry Bird's approach to a contract and Clay's approach to a contract and see if anyone even thinks about it that way. It's just drilled down your throat so much now that these players deserve the world and then some that no one even questions it. And like, wait a minute, this entire conversation is off. What more is owed to these guys. They're already living dream lives. At some point, at some point, <laughs> we got to stop with this entitlement. Oh, and boy, that conversation with that Laker fan, uh, tow truck driver, there was a lot. There was a lot in there. Maybe I'll save that for another episode. All right. Maybe that guy could put in a word for Clay Thompson at the tow truck driving school and get a new job there. See, that's not even funny because Clay's made so much money. He, nor his kids, nor the kids after that, nor the kids after that actually have to work another day in any of their lives with these contracts. Yeah, Clay, take a lesson from Larry Bird. Say thank you and give back the money. <laughs>